Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today on today's webinar, Together for the Cloud Forest, Be Part of the Solution campaign launch. Just a little information before we get started. We will be sending you the recording from this presentation to the email through which you signed up. To those who are joining us through Facebook Live, email us at friends at friendsamonteverdecr.org if you would like the recording sent to your email. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat and I will bring them up. To those who are joining us through Facebook Live, email us at friends at friendsamonteverdecr.org or submit your questions through the Facebook Live comment section. Otherwise, we will hold a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Please don't forget to complete the exit survey that will be sent out today by email so we can receive feedback on today's presentation. For any attendees who have dialed in by phone, please select telephone and enter your audio pin in the audio panel to eliminate any echo. We will go over the agenda for today. We will go through the welcome. We will talk about the webinar. You will get to meet the team. We will have the presentation about Friends of Monteverde, Cloud Forest Reserve. And at the end, we will hold a Q&A. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mariana Pacheco. I'm a born and raised Costa Rican. I'm pursuing my PhD in psychological and quantitative foundations at the University of Iowa. My mom, Rocio Lopez, is the coordinator of Friends of Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. Today, we are presenting the campaign launch of Together for the Cloud Forest, Be Part of the Solution, presented by the following panelists. Let's go ahead and meet the team. Arelis Brenes. Arelis is the assistant manager of the private reserve system of the Tropical Science Center. Growing up near the majestic Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve, she loves promoting Monteverde's model of sustainability and conservation for the world. She also is passionate about languages, cultures, and helping others enjoy her country of Costa Rica. Pamela Gore Mead. Pamela holds a master's degree in tropical conservation and development from the University of Florida and is a long, long time board member of Friends of the Monteverde Cloud Forest, currently serving as board treasurer. She is a past development director for the Tropical Science Center in the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. Pamela helped spearhead the San Luis Biological Corridor Project, which connects forest fragments along Monteverde's Pacific Slope to the reserve, and it is essential for keystone species, such as the resplendent Quetzal. William Aspinall. William has a BS in forestry and more than 30 years of experience in forest and national resource management, his lifelong passion. He is a founding member of Friends of the Monteverde Cloud Forest, a former managing director of the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve, and an active member of the Tropical Science Center for more than 20 years. He owns and manages the Arenal Observatory Lodge and Spa by the Arenal Volcano. I want to thank all the panelists for being here talking to us about the campaign launch of Together for the Cloud Forest Be Part of a Solution. Now, we will go ahead and begin with Pamela Gourmead and William Aspinall, our first panelist, so they can explain the characteristics of a cloud forest as well as the story of the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. Thank you, Mariana, for the introduction. And it's great to speak with all of you today. Costa Rica's Monte Verde cloud forest is extraordinary and rare. Cloud forests make up just 1% of global woodland, yet they provide a rich habitat for a huge range of plants and animals, many found nowhere else on earth. Cloud forests exist above 1000 meters elevation and are covered in clouds, fog, and mist most of the time. Trees are rich with mosses, lichens, and other epiphytes, such as orchids, bromeliads, and ferns, creating a beautiful fairy tale like atmosphere. One of their unique features is the ability to trap water from clouds. Branches, leaves, and mosses collect droplets that drip to the forest floor and enter streams and groundwater aquifers. Cloud forests are a major source of water for rivers. Cloud forests also impact global weather systems and play an important role in regulating the Earth's climate. But despite their benefits, cloud forests are among the most threatened ecosystems on the planet due to the combined effects of population growth, 
uncontrolled land use, and climate change. <clears throat> In 1970, cloud forests covered around 50 million hectares of the Earth's surface. Today, the complete loss of cloud forests and their unique biodiversity is at risk. By early 1970s, the high mountain forest of Monteverde in Costa Rica had nearly vanished to create pastures for herds of cattle. With few trees remaining to provide shade, cattle supplied the livelihood of the Costa Rican families that lived there. In the patches of forest that remained, people could hear the bird songs of the resplendent quetzals. Male quetzals sang intensely to attract females, and then together they searched for a hollow tree to nest and shelter their chicks. As more and more trees disappeared, the Quetzals had fewer places to nest and began to disappear. As a reaction to this unfolding loss of habitat, U.S. scientist George Powell and his Quaker friend, Monteverde community leader Wilford Geenden, began educating local Costa Rican families about the importance of conserving the cloud forest's rich biodiversity. These first efforts to promote environmental education in Monteverde soon bore fruit. The Monteverde Cloud Forest Preserve was soon created, growing from an initial 810 acres to over 10,193 acres today and encompassing four biological life zones. 2% of the total area is open to the public while the rest is dedicated to conservation. More than 126 species of mammals, 448 species of birds, 60 species of amphibians, and 101 species of reptiles live here. It is one of the few remaining habitats in Costa Rica that supports all six feline species, jaguars, ocelots, pumas, ancillas, Margays and Jaguarundis, along with the endangered three wattled bellbird and resplendent Quetzal. The cloud forest we protect delivers many benefits to communities both near and far, including pure air and clean water. Almost 50 years have passed since that historic millstone, and today, Monteverde's Reserve Environmental Education Program continues to educate and raise conservation awareness among local and international visitors alike. There have been thousands of students who year after year take part in workshops on environmental issues that enhance their cloud forest visits. These same students contribute in protecting the cloud forest by participating in reforestation activities climate station monitoring programs and employing sound sustainable practices. Today, many former Today, students many hold many the decision Next, let's listen to Ara Sandi, a former student of the Monteverde Reserve's Environmental Education Program and current manager of a nearby regional waterworks facility. Y para mí es tantos recuerdos bonitos desde las giras a la reserva poder caminar en los senderos, aprender sobre las plantas, los animales, sobre los ecosistemas en general. Para mí esos recuerdos son súper valiosos, incluso este, para aplicarlos con mis hijos, que también es muy importante que ellos aprendan ese amor y ese respeto a los recursos naturales. Y me acuerdo que Mercedes nos explicaba sobre las epífitas, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué eran tan importantes en el, en el ecosistema? ¿Qué función tenían? E incluso nos... nos acercaba hasta estas plantas, ¿verdad?, para enseñarnos dónde habían aguas, los animales que llegaban hasta esas plantas, pero eso me ha permitido tener un compromiso real, porque nos permite disfrutar de esos recursos, pero con un sano equilibrio, respeto hacia la naturaleza que nos brinda ese recurso indispensable para la vida, ¿verdad? 
Para nosotros en general, y cuando digo nosotros me refiero a la comunidad, es súper importante tener este programa para los niños especialmente, porque si caló en mí y todavía tantos años después yo lo puedo sentir, esperaría que otros niños puedan vivir esas experiencias tan bonitas. Lo necesitamos para las comisiones de educación ambiental que tenemos a nivel comunal y de verdad, acérquese, únase, colabore con este programa que de verdad es muy importante y siéntase orgulloso de que usted también puede ser parte. Thank you, Pamela and William. We will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel or through the Facebook Live comment section. It looks like we have a question. Cynthia asked, when you use the word children, who directly benefits from this program? Thank you, Cynthia. The direct beneficiaries of this program are elementary school children ranging from first through sixth grade and teachers of 12 different schools, families of the Guasimal and Monteverde districts, Monteverde reserve officials and their families, and staff from government institutions and local NGOs. On the other hand, the indirect beneficiaries are national naturalist guides, tourism mm -hmm. companies and tour operators, hotel and gastronomy companies and, and organized groups and families visiting Monteverde who perceive the environmental culture of the community. That's awesome. Thank you, Pamela and William, for answering this question and for giving us an introduction to the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Mariana. Absolutely. Now, without further ado, we will turn to our next panelist. Our presenter today is Arelis Brenes, who will explain the environmental education program. Thank you, Mariana. Greetings, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk to you a little about the importance of our environmental education program. Welcome to our campaign launch. Since its creation in 1972, the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve engages three fundamental pillars for conservation, research, protection, and environmental education. Three funds generated from ecotourist visits to the reserve, we have been able to carry out this mission. The next video features Dr. Alan Pounce, longtime associate member of the Tropical Science Center, Friends of the Monteverde board member, and resident scientist at the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. We began the, the program of environmental education in the early 1990s <clears throat> to involve the community in protection and conservation of the forest. It's very important for people to understand what they have, what great value it has in order to understand it and protect it. So it's very important to to reach people of all ages, but especially children, to get them thinking about nature and the importance it plays in all of our lives. So I think the work that the program of environmental education is doing with climate change is very important. It's very viable to, to have kids collect weather data along with the help and support of their families, as well as their teachers, and to work with these data hands-on to understand how climate is changing and also to think about how it impacts everything around them. So these kids are also studying plants and animals and when they're studying weather at the same time they start seeing the, the relationships and seeing how changes in the patterns, these climatic changes over time, can have a very big impact on living communities. I would like to invite all of you to become friends of the Monterey Cloud Forest. Your help can be very important in ensuring that the forest here continues to be the home for many plants and animals for, for years to come. You can be part of this effort to protect the forest.
This site, which is a natural paradise, is one of the most biodiverse places in the world. Its ecosystem contains more than 2.5% of the existing biodiversity on our planet. It provides innumerable ecosystemic services for the national community. This includes water resources for both human consumption and electricity generation for much of the country, clean air and carbon fixation, and of course, opportunities for recreation and relaxation. The latter has been especially important in the last year during COVID-19 pandemic. We're simply being in a beautiful, natural place can provide a sense of calm and serenity, so vital to the human emotional conditions. Through all these years of permanent and systematic educational work, we have given, we, we have given 2,673 workshops in the local schools in the area of influence of the reserve, as well as facilitated 891 educational tours so students may understand and learn about the wonderful connections of a species that inhabit it and make this ecosystem a living and a healthy place. In addition, community activities, environmental fairs, cleaning and reforestation campaigns, naturalist art workshops, entrepreneurship with women artisans, and training for farmers and ranchers are organized to support community members in carrying out their work in a sustainable way and in balance with the environment. In sum, it has been an extensive and satisfactory process in which we want to continue while bringing economic and environmental well-being to our national community. Because we know that if we protect tropical ecosystems, we protect ourselves. In this moment of the health crisis and social confinement, we need your help. We invite you to be part of this novel educational work. Together, let us continue working, educating, and sensitizing the children who will become the decision makers of tomorrow. So with them, their actions, they are invested and protecting this beautiful place called home. Support us. You can be part of the solution. Thank you, Arelis. Thank you, Mariana. We will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a quick reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in the control panel or through the, fa the Facebook Live comment section. 
It looks like we have a question from Kelly. She asks, what are the specialty areas that your educational program offers? Thank you, Kelly. The specialty areas within an environmental education program are climate change, environmental education, solid waste management, environmental interpretation, and teaching. Thank you, Arelis, for answering our questions. Thank you, Mariana. Now, the next video features Dr. Leslie Burlingame, historian in science and environment. As I did my investigations, I learned more about specific programs. Uh, for instance, the um, visiting the schools here uh, for um, to provide environmental education and bringing students up to the reserve uh, to give them special hands-on education. First um, talks and activities and then uh, walks in the forest so that they come to appreciate what's up here and that they want to protect it. And I think that these, the activities in Monteverde and environmental education are a model for other places in the world that they can learn from your successes. I think it's incredibly important not only to continue the environmental education program, but to increase it, to augment it. Because right now we are facing a crisis in the world due to climate change. And it's much worse than COVID uh, in terms of the impact on the planet. So we, we have a generation to make changes, make major changes. And it's crucial to start with the children and then also with their parents and the community to influence behavior to want to uh, preserve nature and do things to minimize climate change. Now you have the chance to be part of this solution by helping support environmental education here with this new campaign. As you've just heard from our ladies and Dr. Burlingame, we take our environmental education program seriously. Our climate station workshops are an innovative teaching strategy that allows school children to research the atmospheric conditions of their community and acquire observation and data taking skills, which encourage them to use scientific methods. This project enables them to explore the environment more directly generate scientific thinking, and strengthen values such as teamwork, leadership, and respect for the opinions of others through dialogue. A series of workshops are also given on the importance of the ozone layer, greenhouse gases, and global warming, and climate change as it affects our biodiversity, agriculture, and public health. Mm -hmm. This helps students understand and internalize the impact of climate change on the region. For field work, students use instruments to measure local atmospheric conditions, such as precipitation, temperature, humidity, and direct observation of clouds, which they later record on climate boards in the classroom. Students also analyze local atmospheric conditions and how human actions affect the natural balance of ecosystems. They also reflect on their social responsibility and how they can help mitigate climate change and be part of the solution. That's great, William. Thank you for sharing this information. Thank you, Mariana, for having me. We will go ahead and watch the Together for the Cloud Forest Be Part of the Solution campaign launch video. We are all connected on the planet. Our decisions affect everyone and ourselves. The habitats that exist on our planet are also connected and interdependent upon each other. Therefore, the way we have been making decisions must change. What do we do about it? For more than 30 years, 
We have worked with thousands of students to learn to respect and appreciate our unique environment. We are fostering conservation attitudes and actions to protect our natural resources and safeguard our planet for future generations. But to continue, we need your help. Join our effort and support us. You can be part of the solution. Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest is a U.S.-based 501c3 nonprofit organization registered in the state of Ohio and dedicated to preserving biodiversity in and around the Monte Verde Cloud Forest. Since 1992, Friends has worked in tandem with the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve, raising funds to help support conservation, environmental education, and scientific research in the region. Over the years, grants have been made to purchase additional land for conservation, improve trails and other infrastructure, fund important research relevant to keystone species, and most importantly, expand outreach through the Environmental Education Program. Unfortunately, the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic significantly reduced visits to the reserve beginning in March of last year, strongly impacting the reserve's financial resources and thus its ability to properly support the environmental education program. We know folks like you appreciate natural places and understand that education is the most powerful force to conserve biodiversity, tackle climate change, and create a more sustainable future for our planet. The next video features Carlos Hernandez, General Manager of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve and the Board Director for Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest. Please watch. A nivel de país, los procesos de educación ambiental que se han venido dando a través de los años han sido los que nos han generado esa ideología conservacionista, ese creer que la forma de lograr eh, un desarrollo es a través del desarrollo sostenible. Yo pienso que con el manejo que se le ha dado a la reserva, con el programa de educación ambiental y con el aporte y apoyo de la comunidad de Monteverde, se ha logrado establecer procesos eh, de desarrollo sostenible. La situación actual del planeta Eh, con el tema de la pandemia, lógicamente ha afectado a, a nuestro país y por ende a la Reserva Biológica Bosque Nuboso Monteverde, pues nos mantenemos de los ingresos que son generados a través de nuestros visitantes. De estos ingresos eh, logramos desarrollar nuestros programas. Estamos pidiéndole colaboración a todas aquellas personas que quieran Eh, apoyarnos a, para que el programa de educación ambiental eh, siga adelante. Yo quisiera pedirles encarecidamente que nos ayuden, porque usted puede ser parte. So, what can you do to help? You can support our effort today by joining Be Part of the Solution campaign to rescue the Monteverde Reserve's environmental education program. By donating securely today, you can help us preserve the rich, unique, and fragile habitat of the Monteverde cloud forest. Be part of the solution. And here's how you can support our Be Part of the Solution campaign. You can friend us on Facebook and Instagram at Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve. Share our publications. Subscribe to our newsletter. Be part of our membership program. Donate in one of four ways on our landing page via PayPal or credit card. Through our GoFundMe account, 
as Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve via Amazon Smile, where your purchase can ben benefit the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve, or you can mail your tax deductible check to Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve in care of the Cleveland Botanical Gardens, 11030 East Boulevard, Cleveland, Ohio, 44106 USA. Be part of the solution. Save the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve's environmental education program. Donate, Donate today. 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 Awesome. Now we will go ahead and take some time for questions in our Q&A. Just a last reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel or through the Facebook Live comment section. It looks like we already have a few questions for our Q&A. Panelists, please answer accordingly. We have a question from Adrián. How much important is tourism for Monteverde to conserve this beautiful ecosystem? Adrián, it's very, very important. The education program and all my years experience in this type of environment has taught me to see the importance of the program as we've seen children develop from school age, kindergarten, all the way up into high school and seeing their appreciation in the environment and their help has given everything uh, uh, let's say a new face in the community. That's awesome. Thank you, uh, William, for answering that question. And thank you, Adrian, for sending us a question. Um, it looks like we have a really important question from Kathy. The question is, how can we donate funds to your program? Uh, sure, I'll answer that. Thank you, Kathy, for the question. Um, regarding the donations, um, just let me recap for you. There are a few ways. Um, if you go to our landing page, um, just go to friendsofmonteverdecr.org, and there you'll have the opportunity to make a payment via PayPal or credit card. Um, you can also go to our GoFundMe account, and we're listed under GoFundMe as Friends of the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve. Um, I mentioned earlier, if you want to make a purchase on Amazon Smile, um, you can indicate that you'd like your purchase to benefit Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve, and uh, Amazon Smile will give us a, a portion of your purchase. Um, and then finally, the old-fashioned way, uh, we'd love for you to mail a check, uh, which is tax deductible, to Friends of the Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve, and our address is in care of the Cleveland Botanical Gardens. That's at 11030 East Boulevard in Cleveland, Ohio, zip code 44106 in the USA. That's awesome. Thank you, Pamela, for your response. We have another question from Juan. It states the following. What is the geographical location of your educational program? Thank you for your question, Juan. The geographical location in the province of Punta Arenas, Costa Rica. Most of Monteverde's biological reserves regions of influence is located on the Pacific slope of the Tilarang mountain range and less extensively on a portion of, towards the north, towards the plains of San Carlos. In this region, the continental division water heads northwest and southwest. To the east, the slopes of Pilarang's mountain range descend to the San Carlos Plain and to the west towards the Costa Rican Pacific coast. However, if you are not from this area, the Environmental Education Program also offers a range of workshops and services for companies and students of different education levels. Feel free to email us for more information at friends at friendsofthemonteverdecr.org. That's awesome. Thank you, William, for answering that question. 
And we have another question from George. He is wondering, what are some other ways we can collaborate to help support your program? Thank you, Mariana. Yeah, sure, I can answer that. Thank you for the question, George. Regarding collaborations, you can collaborate by visiting the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve in Costa Rica. Funds from ticket sales go to protect and conserve tropical science centers for private reserve and the environmental educational program. Income from complementary service services such as guided tours, lodging, and meals at the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve also contribute with the environmental education program. Thank you, Arelis, for your answer. So it looks like we have covered all of our questions. I want to thank all of our panelists today who were part of the campaign launch of Together for the Cloud Forest, Be Part of the Solution, as well as all of our attendees watching from all over the world. Don't forget to email us at friends at friendsofmonteverdecr.org if you would like the recording sent to your email or if you have any further questions. And please don't forget to complete and submit the exit survey. We value your feedback. Have a great rest of your week. Goodbye and thank you. Bye. Bye. We are all connected on the planet. Our decisions affect everyone and ourselves. The habitats that exist on our planet are also connected and interdependent upon each other. Therefore, the way we have been making decisions must change. What do we do about it? For more than 30 years, we have worked with thousands of students to learn to respect and appreciate our unique environment. We are fostering conservation attitudes and actions to protect our natural resources and safeguard our planet for future generations. But to continue, we need your help. Join our effort and support us. You can be part of the solution.